Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about that massive tornado outbreak that's going to be going on from tonight through the day tomorrow especially, but also on the day Thursday as well. We're also going to talk about a little bit of a snow chance for the Northeast as well later on. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you guys think there's any chance that we see a high chance of severe weather tomorrow? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into things and first things first, we're taking a look at the radar that's going on here for the entire United States and you can see there's tons of showers, snow showers, rain showers out west but generally just like weird little areas of showers going on with some precipitation. I mostly want to draw your attention to the eastern United States. We have two interesting things going on. First off, some severe weather down there for the southeast and some raininess but also some snowfall up there for the northeast. So first things first, let's take a look at that snow going on up there in the northeast and the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes. All right, now here we are taking a look at the northeastern corner of the United States. And as you can see, there is some snowfall going on for Michigan, both the upper peninsula and the lower peninsula there. That is coming to an end. But also some snow showers for New York, Pennsylvania down there. And, and the interesting thing is overnight here in Virginia, actually, we're 35 right now. But I swear I heard it uh, sleeting outside on my roof. I could not fall asleep because of that. It was just absolutely pinging everywhere. So I'm pretty sure it was sleeting overnight. Uh, which it's pretty late in the season here for Virginia, so pretty interesting weather going on. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to fly down to the southeast in just a moment and take a look at those severe thunderstorms and some of those heavier showers going on down there. So here we are taking a look at the southeast, and as you can see, we do have some tornado warnings, some severe thunderstorm warnings that have happened overnight, especially for Alabama there. There was a couple for Tennessee as well uh, with those more severe thunderstorms. We only had a marginal risk, and I'm pretty sure we had some more supercells showing up. So I think it could have been a slight risk. They could have kept it with a slight risk as of yesterday. It seemed like it overperformed a little bit there. Uh, and as you can see for Virginia up there, the southeastern region of Virginia, just because I mentioned the sleet thing, I'm pretty sure what happened is we probably got some of those heavier pockets in the darker greens and yellows. And that was enough to pull down that colder air and switch it over to sleet for a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's what happened. As of right now, it is only raining, even though it's 35 outside. So it's pretty close to where it could be some wintery precipitation, but I'm pretty sure we're at only rain at this point on the very northern extent of that rainfall that's going on for the southeastern United States. It's those thunderstorms down there that I'm mostly worried about for Alabama. Those are going to move into Georgia and generally weaken by that point. It's mostly Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas that we're worried about tonight. So we're going to go ahead and move on and talk about those things here. All right, so here is that categorical outlook for day one, which is going to be for Tuesday, March 16th, all the way through tomorrow morning at about 8 a.m. Most of this is going to happen actually after the overnight hour. So like 12 a.m. till 8 a.m. is going to be when most of this occurs, actually. I did briefly schedule a live stream for today, but it became apparently clear that this is not going to be happening anytime while I'm awake or most other people are awake at all. This is going to be the beginning of that tornado outbreak, actually. And tomorrow we have a huge live stream planned. Me and Brendan, if you guys were there during the live stream the other day, me and Brendan did a live stream together. That was a whole lot of fun and all of you, I think, enjoyed having him there as well. So we're going to do it again have a massive live stream tomorrow just completely covering this storm trying to stay live during the entirety of that system so we're going to try to do that uh, i'm going to leave a link in the pinned comment and the description for that live stream that is already scheduled so you can hit that reminder button you can go ahead and keep that there uh, until we go live if you do live in those regions or if you just want to be a part of that live stream we've already scheduled it so people can start um you know hitting that notification button there for that so that's going to be in the description and in the pinned comment Tonight, we have a slight risk for Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. I do expect that there is a possibility we could see an enhanced risk. It depends how early those storms can get started. Let's take a look at those individual outlooks real quick. Wind, we have 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green. 15% within the yellows there, so that encompasses our slight risk region. Here's the hail, and it's identical. So, like, literally nothing changed here except for the word hail. Um, here is our tornado risk and we have a 2% chance there within all of those green regions. So that's going to be pretty widespread there, as you can see. Uh, and then for the brown region there, that's where we have a 5% chance there for central Oklahoma. Again, sometime in between 12 and 5 a.m. probably is the most likely time frame for that to be happening. So this is going to be an overnight hour event where it's going to be really, really difficult uh, to warn people properly. So keep those weather radios out. Try to make it so that you can be warned even if you're asleep. That's going to be your best bet there as there could be some violent tornadoes. This is the beginning of that tornado outbreak. So I do expect that we could begin to see some violent supercells, violent tornadoes 
uh, already throughout the night tonight into tomorrow. Tomorrow, we could have the probably the biggest tornado outbreak of the year, potentially. Um, that's how these moderate, high-end moderate risk events go. Like last year, we had the um, Easter event, and I think that was the biggest one last year. Um, so this could be that this could be this year's version of that potentially hopefully not because that was a very bad day but this could be the worst one of the year uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to move on we're going to take a look at the model guidance for day one and then we're going to start talking about day two which is tomorrow Wednesday March 17th. So real quickly, high temperatures here are going to be generally in the 80s and upper 70s there for Oklahoma, Texas. The thing is, we're not going to get storms underway this early. This would be about maybe 4 or 5 p.m. there. Uh, but here's the dew points. Look at that. 30s in central Oklahoma where we have that 5% uh, chance of tornadoes. So you're probably thinking that is not even close to being able to uh, you know, have severe weather. But by the time we're reaching like maybe 11 p.m., look at that. We're all the way up into the 50s, the mid-50s with the dew points. So they are rapidly increasing here. And they just get higher and higher as the night progresses. So that's why we're not going to have storms developing until like 11 or 12 a.m. potentially. Here's that cape by about 6 p.m. You can see there's pretty much none there for a lot of Oklahoma. There is some for the more southern regions there. But by the time we're reaching about 11 p.m., you can see that's increasing throughout the night. So that's why we're going to have that overnight threat mostly. Uh, and then by the time we're reaching about maybe 4 or 5 a.m., 2,000 cape potentially plus for the central regions of Oklahoma. So that's just going to be increasing further and further. Here's that significant tornado parameter. And there's actually a pretty moderate to high rating here. Uh, we're getting a lot of fours, five, six, maybe even eight amounts being picked up there in the pinks and darker reds. That's going to mean that we're pretty sufficient there for some stronger tornadoes. Uh, that's usually what that indicates. Let's move on with that simulated radar real quick for day one. Here's 8 p.m. Nothing around here. Uh, but by the time we're reaching 10 p.m., you can see those more uh, stronger storms developing finally. And then by 11 p.m., they get even worse. We can't really move on any further than that here on our HRRR model, but they just continue to get worse and worse. Now, here's that day two categorical outlook. I'm very concerned about this. We have a general thunderstorm risk there in the in the lighter green, which means mostly just normal thunderstorms with no real severe weather implications. The marginal risk is where we start to get those isolated severe weather uh, occurrences happening in there. The yellow is the slight risk, and that's where they start to get scattered in kind of. The orange is where it becomes a lot more consistent. We call that our enhanced region, and that's when we start to see a little bit more widespread severe weather. And then the moderate risk is where we do expect widespread severe weather to occur. Uh, generally, almost every single spot in here is going to see some bad thunderstorms in that moderate risk. That is what we expect. Uh, as we take a look at those individual outlooks, here's the wind outlook. First off, we have a 5% chance within the green region, a 15% chance within the yellow, and then a 30% chance of damaging wind within the red. Uh, and that's within 25 miles of a given location, by the way. Same story here for the hail. We extend it a little bit further north. And we do get that hatched region you can see there for Arkansas, portions of Mississippi, Tennessee, and Missouri. That's where they expect two-inch diameter hail or more to be very possible within that region. So we could see some very large hail occur up there. And then last but certainly not least is my biggest concern, the tornado outlook here. We have a 2% in the green, 5% in the brown. 10% within the yellow and then 15% chance there in the red within 25 miles of a given location. I don't know about you, but I don't like those odds if I lived there uh, with a 15% chance of a tornado hitting within 25 miles of my house. That's not good. We're going to hope that everybody gets through that day very safely. And look, you need to know a radio. Okay, if you don't have one, I have those linked down below among other safety products down there that I've linked for you guys. Uh, but a NOAA radio, I really hope most of you have one. That is going to be very useful in this situation for sure. Um, but the hatched region as well there, you can see that hatched area. That means that they expect EF2s to EF5s to be uh, pretty highly probable as well within that region. So there could be some very violent tornadoes. Uh, the, the whole environment is going to be very suitable for that to occur there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the modeled guidance here for that day two risk, just like we did for day one. Uh, we're going to take a look at that simulated radar and everything, and then a little bit of day three as well. And then we're going to talk about that snowfall potentially going on for the northeastern United States and the central United States. All right, now here we are taking a look at those high temperatures. As you can see, 70s and 80s are going to be around uh, for most of Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, portions of southern Georgia. That's going to be at about 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. there on Wednesday there. Let's take a look at the dew points and very high here. We see upper 60s. That is going to be very, very good uh, for thunderstorm development there. So that is not looking 
uh, good for us at all. 70s there for Louisiana. So that is very high dew points there. Here's our Cape. And as you can see, widespread. This is already by about uh, maybe 3 or 4 p.m. here on Wednesday. As you can see, we're already going to have 2,500 to 3,000 amounts. Pretty widespread here within those oranges and reds. Very high cape there. And then for our shear, we're going to have very sufficient shear. Those browns, pinks, and reds are going to be good enough for very strong tornadoes to develop a very high shear event here as well, which is very typical early in the season like this. That's why those January, February, and March tornado outbreaks can be very dangerous because we usually have a lot of shear in the wintertime. As those jet streams are still very um, volatile there, uh, it creates a lot more shear for this time of year rather than like May, June, July. We have much less of that shear around usually. Here's that significant tornado parameter, and this is absolutely just terrible looking. Uh, those pinks, uh, those purples are widespread throughout the entire region here of the, of the Gulf states and basically a lot of Arkansas, Missouri, and Tennessee as well. That is not what you want to see. That means the whole environment is just very suitable for large damaging tornadoes here. And then by the time we're reaching around 12 a.m. here, which I'm sure me and Brendan will consider still being live by this point if there is some, you know, very damaging storms going on. Uh, we're going to just keep it going probably. But as you can see, we have still those purples and pinks around. So this is going to be a very long-lived event. Let's just walk through that simulated radar real quick. And we're starting out at about 8 a.m. We see some storminess down there uh, for Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas. Uh, but it's mostly those ones in northern Mississippi we're worried about. Uh, but really, this is not when our severe weather is starting out. We're seeing some showers in the viewing area. And this is the one thing I wanted to mention that could hold back this severe weather event from being an absolutely catastrophic one. If those showers linger in the Gulf states where we're expecting the severe weather, that is going to lower the cape in the temperatures because if the sun can't pierce through, we're not going to get as high of temperatures. If these clear out very fast and we see very sunny conditions for hours before this event, I'm expecting a very, very bad event. That moderate risk will clearly stay. If not, a high risk would be placed there uh, if it stays sunny throughout the day and the short range models continue to show these very, very bad conditions. Uh, that's a high risk possible. I'm not saying it's guaranteed if it's sunny, but th that would increase the odds for sure. By 12 p.m., you can see this model does show it clearing up substantially there for central Mississippi, central Alabama. There is some showers around, but if that sun is able to make it through, expect worse conditions. All right, now our thunderstorms that are actually severe begin to develop around 3 or 4 p.m. here, according to this model on Wednesday. Mostly for Louisiana and Arkansas here, we do see some of those starting out ahead of time in Alabama as well, as the entire environment is just going to be very sufficient for severe weather. I expect supercells to be widespread throughout all of these areas. By 7 p.m., we can see a lot of that going on for uh, Louisiana. We can see up through Mississippi and still some of those storms out ahead for Alabama as well by 7 p.m. And then by 2 a.m., you can see these storms are still very violent along that Mississippi and Alabama border there. So this is going to be ongoing all night. Now, day three. Day three, which is going to be Thursday and through early on Friday morning, we already have an enhanced risk all the way from Georgia up through South Carolina and North Carolina. Very widespread here with the potential for a moderate risk up upgrade, although I'm, I'm sort of doubtful here. The East Coast does not have as easy of a time seeing bad severe weather events, but it is possible at this point. Will I be live on Thursday? I don't really know at this point. I'm going to have to see, wait and see. I would love to, so we'll, we'll try our best here. Here's 10 a.m., and you can see those storms really haven't ever broken down. They're just continuing on. They're moving into Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Uh, and then by the time we're reaching about 2 p.m., we can see those still ongoing. But they don't look as violent as they did the day before. We're going to have to wait and see how that carries through. Uh, but at this point, I feel like an enhanced risk is a really good um, a rating for now for Thursday. Here's that snowfall first off for the central United States, and that is going to be associated with this severe weather event. But we do see for the grays adjusting to 2 inches. Uh, within the blues, two to six, the purples, six to ten, and we even see some pinks in there, and that's where we're at six to, or sorry, ten to twenty inches of snow. Let's move out east, and as you can see, we have those grays and blues, and even some purple showing up there for Connecticut. So possibly uh, four, six, seven, eight inches possible for some of these regions in southern New England. We will wait and see. That could be a decent snowstorm for this time of year for those regions. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a five out of six. Obviously, there is some chance that this either overperforms or underperforms, so I'm leaving that at a five out of six. I've been saying that for days now, and it's pretty safe in my opinion. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think we will see a moderate risk for day two at the time? Or sorry, day three at the time. It's day two now for Wednesday. And Weather Today said we will most certainly be upgraded to a moderate risk for the Dixie Alley. And this was a comment that was left before we actually were upgraded to a moderate risk. So good comment of the day there by you. 
Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Balemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Mayhar, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Vallego, Garys, and John Felici. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to smash that like button, help the algorithm share this to more folks. Leave a comment down below what you thought, and be sure to subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.